So this is a story that comes from India. And uh, I found the story after I came here. So uh, it's a fairly fresh story, but when I read it, I really had a laugh. Um, and uh, right, so this story starts in the house of a very poor man. Um, don't know whether he was just, some said he was lazy, but then others said he was just down on his luck. And he never quite cobbled up enough in a day to have a fair square meal. Now, his wife over the years began to lose patience with him. And in their little arguments that they had together, one day she just looked at him and she said, you know what, I've had enough. You've just got to find something to do and bring some steady income into this house. Mm -hmm. But I don't know what to do. He said, well, I don't care anymore. And she packed up some li a little portly, a little basket of old rice that she had in the house, cold rice. And he said, well, I can't eat cold rice. Well, you'll just have to. That's all we have today. And unless you get some work, you're not going to get anything else. So he took that little basket of cold rice and he started walking out towards the city to see if he could get some work. Now, as he went towards the city, he had to cross a small, a smallish forest. It wasn't a big, dense forest, but mm -hmm. he wasn't worried. He'd been through that forest plenty of times before. Only this time, it was summer, and it was about 44 degree heat. It was really hot. Yeah. So by the time he got to the forest, he was exhausted. It was about 11 in the afternoon or the morning, as it is with you. Uh, by the time it's 11 o'clock in summer here, it's just blazing. And when he saw a huge, what we have are uh, neem trees, uh, these are trees with a really large canopy and very, very cooling to sit in a shade. He was so tempted. He ran towards the tree. He tied his little basket in one of the branches of the tree and he lay down on the roots of the tree. And soon in that cool shade, he was snoring. <laughs> what he didn't realize is neem trees are special trees. And in the neem trees, as the wind blows through those trees, there are forest spirits. Mm -hmm. And these forest spirits love the shade of a neem tree too, just like humans. And sure enough, this neem tree had lots of forest spirits. And once the man was asleep, the forest spirits were kind of chirping about, wondering who this man was, what he was doing. They're quite inquisitive creatures. And suddenly, one of them spotted the little basket. Crept up, opened that basket, took a sniff, looked at the others, said, some food in here. Now, here's the thing about forest spirits. Every day, they're fed by the gods. So they're used to really rich food, honey from the honeycombs, sugarcane juices, fresh, aromatic food. It's all quite too much for their stomachs. So when they found this old, cold rice, oh man, they had never tasted anything like that before. And they gulped it down and they were just like, this is the most delicious food ever. Why can't we have something simple? So soon enough, the basket was empty. There was nothing left. And as is the manner of hospitality in these parts, the forest spirits felt rather bad. And they thought, uh, we've got to leave this man something or, you know, we've taken his food. And so it was. When the man woke up as the sun was slowly setting, he got a bit worried. He thought, oh, my, I've overslept. And he hurriedly took his basket down. We thought, let me just grab a little bit of food because if I go home without anything, I'm not going to get anything to eat. This might be the only thing. So he grabbed and he opened the basket and what happened? Where's the food gone? You birds, you monkeys. He was cursing the tree. 
when he spotted in the basket four empty bowls. Huh, what's the use of this? And he overturned the basket and the four bowls clattered onto the floor. As soon as they hit each other and the ground of the forest, there was a transformation. A cool breeze blew past and with the breeze came a whole retinue of women, alluring nymphs, each in their hand carrying a gold or a silver tray filled with different kinds of food. There was rice and there was sweets and there was curry and there was yogurt and whatever he asked for, they fed. Initially, he was rather hesitant and modest and frightened actually of these spirits. And he asked for just one chapati and a little bit of rice. But if he asked for one, they gave him four. And if he asked for a little bit of curry, he got two big bowls of chicken and mutton curry. Mm. And soon he pretty much realized that he owned these women because he was the owner of the four bowls. And so he thought, ha, oh, my days, my days have arrived. And he commanded them to come with him. And he said, well, if you finished eating, we must go, but whenever you, you know, clatter the bowls together, we'll be back. And so he gathered up the bowls and he ran all the way home. His wife was waiting, as Indian women do in the doorways. Before you go in, she said, have you got anything for me? Yes, I have. And you'll never believe what. We don't have to go hungry ever again. Let's go inside. No, 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 no. Let's see what you've got. I can't. Not now. Okay, I'll tell you what I've got. And he opened the basket. Four empty bowls. What use is that? And they're just mud. They're not even precious metal. We can't sell them. Well, hang on a minute. And he told her what had happened to him that afternoon. As soon as she heard it, she knew he was blessed. And she said, ah, this is great, but we can't eat the first meal on our own. So why don't you invite everyone in the village? And then we'll have a nice, big auspicious dinner together and so he went around to each hut and each hut he knocked and he told them to come for dinner and they looked at him rather suspiciously do you have enough mm -hmm. have you have you struck a lottery no 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 well maybe but just just come and come on your empty stomachs there's going to be lots of food they looked at his enthusiasm and they were rather kind of suspicious he was a poor simple man and so they had their dinners and then the whole village arrived, <laughs> quite prepared that they were, things weren't going to work out as the poor man seemed to be imagining. He made them sit in rows as is the manner in Indian dinners. And before each one of them, he laid a banana leaf. And then they waited. And soon his wife came out. She had a mud plate and on the mud plate were four mud bowls. And she came and she laid it in front of the guests. And they all peered over to see what was there in these little bowls, tiny clay bowls. For all of us, some of them sniggered, good thing we ate and came. And she took those bowls and she began to clatter them. And just as the sound was produced, the guests were wondering what was this about? Mm -hmm. One of them looked at the poor man and said, I'm sorry, we didn't realize we had to bring food. But just as the words were out of his mouth, along came a breeze and a retinue of those very same nymphs. And this time they had enough food for the whole village and they fed everybody. They urged them to have some more. And as the men, the men and the women of the village ate, they began to look at each other and talk and gossip. And, and the word spread far and wide from that village. And this poor man, you can imagine, he never went hungry anymore. Not only that, he had enough food to feed all the poor people in the village. And along with that came accolades, came rich men, bearing gifts.
gifts and so he didn't have a little poor hut he had a mansion and his wife dressed in rich clothes and she was happy and i wish i could say that the story ends here and it was a good time but you know that stories aren't as simple as that mm. because in that village was a very a, let's say a substantially very rich man and when he heard about the story of this poor man and he heard about those bowls he thought a rich man like me who does such good deeds deserves something so he went to the poor man and he asked him about his story and the poor man he was so generous he told him how he had come into possession of those four bowls and as soon as he heard the story the rich man he went back he ordered his servants to cook the best meal that they had and he took those plates took them to that tree in the forest and he placed the plates there he lay down it was a hot afternoon but he wasn't going to go to sleep he wanted to know exactly what was happening and he lay there for a pretty long time but it's said that you know the forest spirits never arrive when you're awake mm -hmm. and so a little cool breeze went through the leaves of that green tree and pretty soon it had cradled the rich man to sleep when his eyes opened later that evening what did he see in front of him an empty plate but on that empty silver plate that he had brought from his house were four small mud bowls he was so thrilled he took that plate he ran back home he invited everyone in the village and was because he was a rich man not just that village but the next village and the village from further away as well and soon there were people from three villages crowding to this village they knew about the poor man's story and now the rich man had the same story this was going to be a spectacle people didn't eat that whole day they came on empty stomachs to eat the food of the nymphs and they sat down and the rich man's servants put banana um, leaves extra large banana leaves from his orchard in front of each one of the guests they brought their children along the children were looking forward to the sweets and then he brought the four bowls out on a big ceremonial gold plate he placed it in front of the guests he did a little ritual in front of the bowls and then he took the four bowls clattered them together and the guests watched it was a cool breeze and some people's mouths began to salivate mm -hmm. with that cool breeze came hundreds of muscled wrestlers mm -hmm. and they arrived and they fell upon the guests beating each one of the guests till they had run back home they caught hold of the rich man they beat the living daylights out of him why why said the rich man i've done everything that you asked for this will tell teach you never to ask for something with an expectation of getting anything mm -hmm. and with mm -hmm. that there were no more wrestlers left and the rich man learned his lesson to be content with whatever he had and that's the story of the rich man and the poor man and the food that we have <laughs>